Hello, this is Julie Venners with another Lupus Foundation of America research update. During this program, we will review studies presented at the 2009 American College of Rheumatology annual scientific meeting on lupus-related pregnancy complications. Nine of 10 people with lupus are female, and lupus primarily develops among young women of childbearing age. So research on the impact of lupus on fetuses, newborns, and mothers is important to people living with lupus. Neonatal lupus is a condition caused by the transfer of antibodies or immune cells from a pregnant mother to her fetus. The effects on newborns include heart block, skin rash, liver issues, and low blood counts. Dr. Karun Danan, a pediatric rheumatology fellow at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto, presented data about the recurrence of neonatal lupus using a database which included almost 400 babies born with neonatal lupus. But when we looked at this study to really look at all the um, uh, manifestations of NLE in detail and to follow pregnancies from the first pregnancy forward, we really had to limit our groups from the first pregnancy on. So we ended up with only 36 families and 42 of their subsequent siblings and really looked in detail for any findings of NLE in their kids. So what we found that recurrence of NLE was actually very common in almost three quarters of families. However, most of the recurrence was mild, less than 10% had heart block, um, the vast majority had rash, uh, blood abnormalities, and a quarter were completely well with no findings of NLE. Dr. Peter Ismerly, a rheumatologist with the New York University School of Medicine, presented data from a study on the importance of cutaneous, meaning skin manifestations, as a risk factor for subsequent congenital heart block in babies born with neonatal lupus. According to Dr. Ismerly, mothers who have antibodies to Roe and Law are at increased risk for delivering babies with neonatal lupus, and the risk can increase in subsequent children. Mothers who carry these antibodies who have not had an affected child are, have a 2% incidence of having a disease uh, uh, affecting the heart. And they're around 7 to 16% in cutaneous disease. And we wondered uh, whether if you had a previous child with neonatal lupus, does that increase your risk of having a subsequent child affected? And we showed uh, in 77 children from 58 families uh, that, there in that you have an increased risk uh, for from going on to develop a cardiac neonatal lupus child if you had a previous cutaneous neonatal lupus child, roughly around 18%, which is again tenfold higher than the 2% risk. However, there's probably a referral bias to the registry of multiple affected children, so we did a second analysis limiting to the 39 children born from 31 mothers, and that risk was around 13%, and they were prospectively followed, so that's probably a more accurate risk. Um, which is still sixfold higher than the 2% risk if you have had and never had a previously affected child. So our sort of take home message is for counseling. Uh, if you have a mother of role in law antibodies who had had a cutaneous child who plans on having a subsequent pregnancy, we want them to know that that child is at an increased risk for cardiac neonatal lupus. Although neonatal lupus is rare, children born with heart block have a 30% risk of dying from the complication. Researchers wanted to know if the use of intravenous immune globulin, a class of proteins in the blood, was safe and effective as a preventative therapy for congenital heart block. Dr. Deborah Friedman, a pediatric cardiologist at the New York Medical College in Behalia, New York, reported on data from the PITCH study. We did a prospective multicenter trial in which we enrolled 20 women and gave them intravenous gamma globulin serially during the pregnancy knowing that their risk was nearly one in five of recurrence. All of these women had had prior children with neonatal lupus. We did find that the, we would, could recruit these women and that the intravenous gamma globulin infusions were safe. However, we were unable to show that this particular regimen of prevention could protect the fetuses against congenital heart block. In fact, three of the 20 enrolled fetuses, that is the 17, 18 percent that we have gotten before, recurred despite treatment. We concluded from this trial that intravenous gamma globulin given in the doses that we used during this trial was ineffective in preventing neonatal lupus congenital heart block. However, 
We do believe that we should pursue this avenue of prevention by using a higher dose of gamma globulin in the future, as we think this dose, although safe, was not enough. Inflammation of the placenta is being considered as a basis for pregnancy problems related to lupus. A number of studies looked at a mouse model of lupus and identified specific pathways of inflammation, including regulatory proteins that turn off inflammation. Dr. Jane Salmon, professor of medicine at Weill Medical College of Cornell University, presented data from the PROMISE study, a prospective observational study of lupus patients and their pregnancies. Dr. Salmon and her team of researchers looked at regulatory proteins to determine whether or not they were abnormal in 40 women who had pregnancy problems with lupus. We looked at specific genes that are responsible for turning off these inflammatory responses and found that in 7 out of 40 patients, that's a very big number, it's 18%, there were mutations that were functionally important and inhibited the ability of these proteins to turn off inflammation. So it's a small study, it's just a beginning. It emphasizes the importance of inflammatory pathways mediating damage because when these inflammatory pathways are amplified, you get more damage. So perhaps the way to think of the importance of this study isn't so much of genes that cause risk, but targeting this pathway turning the brake on inflammation to prevent damage even in patients who don't have these unusual mutations. Being able to predict outcomes of lupus pregnancies is important to providing preventative treatment. A long-term study that collected blood from more than 500 patients at nine centers looked for circulating factors that can identify those at risk before they develop pregnancy complications. The researchers wanted to know if pregnant women with lupus show changes in anti-angiogenic factors, biological agents in the body that work against effective blood flow may be responsible for pregnancy-associated complications. Again, Dr. Jane Salmon. This is the first report of a suggestion that we have a circulating factor that's elevated in the second trimester and is associated with problems in the third trimester. And the factor relates to placental development. So we speculate that they're inhibitors of these growth factors in these patients. And we assume they'll occur early in pregnancy rather than late. That's why the placenta doesn't grow properly. We were able to follow, measure these factors every month of pregnancy. And in fact, we found that two of them, two factors associated with poor placental development and preeclampsia in non-lupus patients are elevated before there's any evidence of clinical abnormality in the lupus patients. Now, not every lupus patient with a problem has these factors elevated, and the elevations are variable, but I think we're beginning to pick up trends that will allow us to identify patients at risk. It has shown that with early and close monitoring and with proper intervention and treatment, pregnancies in lupus patients can be perfectly normal if individuals with lupus become pregnant when the disease is inactive. That's all for this edition of the LFA Lupus Research Update. We welcome your comments about this series. Email your thoughts to webmaster at lupus.org. We also invite you to join us and band together for lupus by wearing an LFA purple wristband until there is an FDA-approved medication specifically for lupus. It's been 50 years since the FDA approved a medication to treat lupus, when Dwight D. Eisenhower was president. Together, we can show our support for those who are fighting to find new treatments and highlight the need for safer, more tolerable, and effective medications. Most importantly, we can offer hope to the millions of people affected by lupus. To learn more about this campaign, including how you can get your own purple lupus wristband, visit the LFA website at www.lupus.org forward slash band together. Thanks for watching.